Hello and good afternoon, fellow Tennessee progressives. How are you doing today? This is Rome with Tennessee Progressive League. Just going to talk about a couple things going on. And hopefully this is something that everyone is aware of. But looking at WBIR, and there's a story about the city of Knoxville attempting to do something that I feel like is a progressive measure. So I definitely want to highlight that and have people be aware that this is going on so they can vocalize their support of said so knoxville the city council just unanimous unanimously excuse me passes a resolution apologizing for urban renewal policies now if this is something you're unfamiliar with urban renewal was a program that was supposed to help, I guess you would say, uh, fix the quote-unquote blighted areas of Knoxville, um, which that would definitely be a, a, an opinion. But to get to the to get to the actual bones of it, if approved, the city council would recognize that before healing can begin in African American communities. The council must acknowledge the hurt in our history inflicted on African Americans. The resolution apologizes for predecessors' participation in the enslavement of black people in Knoxville. It also apologizes for decades of a federal urban renewal program that demolished black communities to expand public infrastructure. Knoxville's urban renewal project lasted from 1959 to 1974. And according to documents supporting the resolution, um, that is, officials said that 15 African-American churches were affected by the projects and more than 2,500 families were displaced, not to mention any businesses that might have been in that area. So basically what this is, is there was an area of town that was predominantly inhabited by African-Americans. They had, you know, built their homes, invested in the community. They had businesses there. And the Knoxville government apparently came through and said, hey, we, we want this land. We need this land. Um, and that's pretty much the long and short of it. So due to the program, black families and businesses were forced to relocate from long established communities Per the resolution, as a result of the relocation, families declined further into poverty and were moved into new housing projects, which left them isolated in segregated areas. It also apologizes for denying black families the opportunity to own homes through redlining, which if you're not familiar with what redlining is, you should definitely make yourself familiar to have any sort of informed opinion going forward. So, as a result, generational poverty was created in Knoxville's black communities. Per the resolution, Knoxville City Council will create an African American Equity Restoration Task Force comprised of business, community, financial, education, faith, health care, youth, and city leaders. The resolution also requests that the administration commit $100 million by applying for local, private, state, and federal grants over a 10-year period to support the African American Equity Restoration Task Force solutions. So, it's very interesting. One... It's the the timing of it. I, I don't know. I don't know, you know, if this is something that it's like okay, let's let's start this off with a, a new, you know, federal administration because honestly, I don't know that you would get those grants even really considered under the previous uh, federal administration. So I don't know if that's something that plays into it. Um, I'm not mad at it. Anything that can be done to create, create, excuse me, uh, equanimity. Hey, that's that's great. Um, 
I do wonder, however, because it says it's going to be done through grants. So I'm wondering what the criteria to qualify for those grants will be. Um, is this going to be something that further dis- disenfranchises people that, you know, have had um, charges in the past? You know, are they going to be relegated to the sidelines from something like this? Um, I think, you know, if they really want it to be restorative, then they need to definitely make it available to people that through policies such as this were born into situations that precluded, not necessarily precluded, but definitely percentage wise put them in the middle of, you know, crime and poverty because we know they go hand in hand. Um, oftentimes poverty creating crime, not vice versa. But a lot of kickback. Uh, I was looking on Facebook and just the, the comments are, are crazy. Um, a lot of people have the opinion that it's something that should be addressed among the native American population, um, before, the black population, which I'm confused because I'm like, did you guys not read the article? This is Knoxville city council doing this. So I I don't, and and it's really only addressing a very specific time because honestly, if they did want to address other things, they definitely could. I mean, there was a race riot in Knoxville in 1919. Let's let us not forget that. Um, but, you know, they're focusing on 1959 uh, to the mid-70s. So that's the time period they're focusing on. I don't know that many Native Americans were um, treated unfairly by the Knoxville Knoxville County or City Council at that time. So I do find it very interesting that a lot of people are, you know, the first thing they say is, oh, what about the Native Americans? And this is, wasn't one person. There was a bunch of people saying this uh, in the WBIR comment section. And there was also people saying that, you know, it's only racism pretty much only exists because people talk about racism existing, which I, I don't even know what kind of reality these people come from because that's just – The craziest thing I've ever heard. Um, I guess because it does say slavery, that maybe that's just the mention of it being part of the resolution is something that uh, makes people feel defensive. I don't understand why people feel so defensive about that. It's crazy to me. Um, First of all, it says federal grants. So all of this is getting paid for by federal grants. So it's not like someone in the city is going to have to pay extra taxes. Although, if your city infrastructure was built off of treating a group horribly, I mean, you enjoy the benefits of being in that city. Maybe it's not such a bad thing that you do pay taxes to help the uh, help the people that are the ancestors to have some sort of recompense as to what happened to their ancestors. I mean, why is that such a crazy, crazy idea? You can pass down an an inheritance, right? You can inherit money and pass that down. So why is it the inverse is so crazy that you can think people can inherit debt or inherit a situation that makes it 10 times harder for them to get to a even playing field so i mean obviously i agree with the resolution Uh, i think the heart is in the in the right place i hope it is open and everyone gets to take advantage of it as far as people that might have had uh, criminal records in the past and they're trying to make something of their lives i hope there's grants to help people like that people that probably got a charge because they were in the wrong place at the wrong time um people that you know have charges due to uh, racially predatory police practices. Um, I, I hope all of those people, you know, get to have some, some benefit from this program. 
uh, that's pretty much the big thing going on as far as progressive issues in Tennessee at the moment that I am aware of. However, I am quite aware that I don't know everything. So if there are some progressive issues in Tennessee that are going on that, you know, I haven't posted about or haven't talked about, you know, please reach out to me. Um, I, I would love to have more people come on the Tennessee progressively platform talk about progressive issues as they are happening or as they need to be happening in Tennessee. Um, It's something that I think the the more vocal that we are about progressive ideals, the more people hear what you actually think and how you feel, the more people will realize, Hey, that's, that's, you know, what I believe. That's what I feel. It's not this crazy far out ideology. You know, it's not communism. It's not, it's not a socialism as explained by Republicans. So I'm going to try to do this more frequently, check in with everyone, um, because it definitely feels like as a progressive in Tennessee that you are alone a lot of the times. But there, you know, there are there are groups of us um, that exist. So. I just want to make this a platform where it's easier for those groups or those disparate people to connect under a progressive platform uh, banner in Tennessee and try to create the Tennessee that we can be proud to live in as progressives where people's you know rights are respected and they have the freedom to live as they see fit within the realm of the law. And if the law is something that needs to be changed, we work to get that changed using the tools given to us in our society. So that's what I'm all about. I'm all about changing the things that need to be changed and protecting the things that are inherent to our freedoms. Tennessee Progressive League, this is Rome signing off. Once again, if you do want to reach out, We are on Facebook, Tennessee Progressive League, Instagram, Tennessee Progressive League, Twitter, Tennessee Progressive League, and in an effort to try to do more and have more availability and uh, technology, I would say, I'm debating on trying to do a Patreon or possibly just a cash app. I really don't want to do that, but I don't know of another way to really build the platform and to have it be presented in the professional way that I want it to be presented. So I don't know. Uh, what are your What are you guys' thoughts on that? Um, on on a Cash App or a pa- Patreon that can be set up to sort of help get the message of Tennessee progressive league out there and get more people aware that there is the choice in Tennessee to, to go the progressive route. So, um, I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say. Uh, I look forward to, to the feedback and once again, coming to you from Tennessee, this is Tennessee progressive league, Rome signing out. And I hope everyone has a safe, and wonderful holidays and new year if I don't hear from you or speak to you.